Good evening, everyone. Can we just stand for the salute to the flag? Yeah. Yeah. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, and one I would, like, I would like to advise those present that the notice of this regular meeting of the Housing Authority of the City of Hoboken has been provided to the public in accordance with provision of the Open Public Meeting Act. Notice of this regular meeting of Thursday, July 14 was given by publication of the annual meeting notice of the authority with amendments as necessary and was sent to the Jersey Journal and Star Ledger on Friday, July 1st, 2022 as notification to the general public of the meeting. Sent to the City Clerk of Hoboken on Friday, July 1st, 2022 with a copy of the agenda to be posted on the bulletin board in the city, in City Hall, Hoboken Library and Hoboken Police Department and posted on the authority website on Friday, July 1st, 2022. I direct the meetings of this minute to state that I have announced the adequate notice of this meeting has been given as required by the Open Public Meetings Act. Director Wolf. Thank you, ma'am. A. Forbes. Present. A. Impostato. Here. A. Lewin. Here. B. Reyes. Here. M. Russo. Here. J. Sanford. Here. Do we have anyone signed up for public portion? George Bouvier? Before we start the public portion, I would just like to announce that I would like everyone here, when directing the board, to direct the chair. If we have any issues or concerns, we then will move forward with that. But please address me directly, okay? And we also ask for everyone to be courteous to everyone here, not only on the board, but the staff as well. Thank you. My name is Olte Muriel. Could you spell it? Uh, J-O-R-T-E-M-U-R-I-E-L. Could you speak a little louder? I'm, trying to I'm sorry. To that if you can. I don't know if that's on. Is that on? Oh, okay. Get real close to it. Thank you. No, 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 just get real close okay. to it. Okay, yeah, I'm here on behalf of the tenants because we found out that we might get security in the building, we want to know for sure what's going on because it looks like the mayor don't want to even come up to us and come to one of these meetings to meet with us. But yet, when there's boats in the river that are sunk, he appears in the river and, and all over the news. When the team is need help in the building, he's nowhere to be found. And there's been, not only this, there's been a couple of murders around the area here that needs more security or something. We're, we're getting too much tired of waiting we need something done now, and as soon as possible, the better. Okay? Thank you, Mr. Muriel. And just so you know, we usually don't do the back and forth, but that is one of the resolutions tonight. Okay? Thank you. The next person, Jamie Figueroa. Can we please note that Commissioner Forbes and Commissioner Stanford are here? Can I just have you uh, just spell your name for yes. the record, please? Thank you. Uh, Jamie Figueroa. Could you spell it, please? Jamie, J A I M E Figueroa. F I G U E R O A. 311 13 Street, the bottom of 5C. Oh, well, do that sponsors. I'm here today because there's a time to complain and put out your grievances, but there's also a time to be thankful and appreciative. At the last meeting that was held in this building, there was a meet and greet 
And I pulled one of the supervisors to the side, and I complained about the hedges. People walk by, they look up, and this place looked like a jungle. And it's a bad reflection on the people who live here, because they look down on us. But I pulled the person aside, I asked them to get them down here, and within 48 hours, the hedges were cut. And I'm very appreciative, and I'd like to acknowledge Frank for getting on it right away. I really appreciate it on my behalf, and I believe on behalf of the residents also. The other thing is, the girls here, I appreciate what they've been trying to do. They're keeping the doors open between housing and the residents. And from what I see, they're doing their best. They started, they came in very rough. It was tough for them. But they've grown a lot. And I appreciate that also, girls. Yes. Now, the second half is one of my grievances. <laughs> they go hand in hand. OK. Um, as far as the grass is concerned, it's turning yellow. It's burnt. There are a lot of patches. And that is totally of negligence. Due to negligence from what I see. The company comes here. They are paid a large contract. They come and do a two hour job. In half an hour, 45 minutes. They don't cut the grass properly, okay? The grass also has to be treated. I never see them put any chemicals on the grass. It has always, I've been here at least 15 seasons, our grass has always been green. Now it looks yellow. And there are a lot of bald spots. It shouldn't be. So they're not doing their job. You either get a new company or you get on their butts to do the job well because money is being put out, and it is wrong, okay? The last thing that goes with that, and I've mentioned it before to you, the commission, and the housing. This is not a dog park. People live here. We must be respected. You got people, not only from the building, but from outside, bringing their dogs to defecate, and urinate. They don't like us to walk on their blocks, but our dogs. Because it bothers them. But yet, from across the street, from all other buildings, they bring their dogs here to roll around the grass, to defecate, and to urinate. People live here. This is residential. They have plenty of dog parks in Hoboken to take their dogs. Thank you, and good evening. Adrian Norman. Just I had an issue with the power going out Wednesday, uh, Tuesday evening. My son put it back on when he said it was hot to the touch. Well, hot the call housing. I said they have to be here within an hour on calling the fire department. They were there 10 minutes. But he couldn't do anything because he's not an electrician. So he said he's going to send somebody first thing in the morning. I have to work the next day. And nobody showed up. 8 o'clock, 8.30, 8.45, 30, I had to leave. Apparently, I got a uh, tag on the door, and it stated that they came at 10 and 3 or 3.30. I don't know if they're lightly tapping or if they're ringing the bell, but they didn't give my son enough time to get up out of the room, open the door, and come to the door. Are they waiting two minutes? Or are they actually waiting there for a significant five or ten minutes so that you give somebody time to get to the door? So suffice to say, nobody got to take a look at the outlet. 
And I stated that if it happens again, first thing I'm doing is calling the fire department, not housing. Because I can't depend on housing to come when it's necessary. I don't have time to wait to wait for housing to get there. I have to go to work. I have to drop off my daughter too. I don't have all day. If I say come between 8 and 8.45, I mean 8 and 8.45, not 10 a.m., not 3 p.m. The boys, they said they didn't hear nothing. Nobody, they must have tapped on the door. They didn't bang on the door like they do to everybody else. They didn't bang on the door. They didn't ring the bell. Ring the bell like a maniac like you always do. Please don't take my picture. I didn't give you permission to. Thank you. So you can delete that too. Thank you. Um, you know, it just, it aggravated me. You know, now I have to wait until my next day off, which I don't know until Friday night, and then I will call housing to come and take a look at it because it's, it just doesn't, I work. I don't know about anybody else, but I work and I have a time frame that things need to be done. Um, I've requested in the past few years that paint be supplied to residents who request it, who actually need it. It should be done on a case-by-case -case basis because we all know the issues that we've had with handing out paint to people who are turning around selling it. It's not the case with a couple of people that I've asked that have asked me, oh, how can I get paint in housing? That was not uh, explained. I think the office should be open after work and on a Saturday at least once or twice a month to give the residents that actually work a chance to go see their manager or the director so that they can get the lease signed or write something down. It would help those that work tremendously because some people just can't take time off during the week. And I was asked the question if a resident needed to take custody of a child that wasn't theirs. How would that affect the rent? How do they go about adding the, the child to the lease? Um, they wanted to know if there would be a reduction in the rent or an increase. They, they just needed to get that uh, information and I told them I would get it and get back to them. And I also requested a copy of my inspection report from the last inspection that was done not by HUD by by a third party um, I need a copy of that and I think anybody who requested it should get it um, maybe one other thing I have to get it but that's all thank you Adrian Ms. Vega Carmen Vega Yes, my last name is Vega, B E G A, and my last name is Carmen, C A R M E N, and my last name is Vega. Carmen, number six, E F A L. Thank you. Um, good evening, everyone. I just wanted to discuss about the issues that are going on in this building. One of the things of the issues that we're having. First of all, we had a meeting on Monday with uh, uh, Director Mr. Greco, and we had a meeting with Frank and um, we were just concerned about certain things that were going on. One of the things that are occurring a lot in this building is the apartments there. They may need a repair seriously. Um, that information has been given to the office and they're aware of that. Um, another thing is that roaches and mice, that's an issue in this building. I guess it's terminated that we had before that wasn't doing a good job under this contract. We expect it to be much better. Um, we have issues, well, this is just for the, um, for everyone in particular. Shopping cars, you know, please return them back down to the lobby because when we come from shopping, we don't find anything downstairs. Um, one of the things is the dogs must be registered and always on a leash with a muscle on it, please. Um, because I'm not going to get in an elevator as a big dog there on it. Uh, another thing is, and I'm trying to be very fast, security is needed, George already touched on that. Emergency doors, alarm system. 
Uh, they, they are much needed on the side doors, and especially on this back door, that traffic comes in and out, which is not, they said that was gonna be taken care of, but it has not been taken care of at all. The leaks that we frequently have here occurring. We just had one on Monday after the meeting, there was a leak here, and I mean, it was just going down here. I had bingo that night, and I had to push everyone towards over here, because I can't cancel bingo with them. That's all they're looking for. So there was a mess over here. Um, also, I wanted to also thank, and I wanted to be very, um, make sure this was on record. Wongo, we are very delighted that you have, that you're here as a chairwoman. And, um, and you listen to our concerns, um, and we really appreciate it of that, Barbara, Thank because you. I know you will take that into consideration. As far as the commissioners as well, I know I'm very delighted you're here. For the rest, I'm very happy that you're here. And um, Danny, our repairman, he's our ERP. He's always helping others um, above and beyond. Uh, he does things for tenants that he's not supposed to do, and yet he does it out of his kindness of his heart. So I want to thank Danny for that. Uh, yes, please. Yes, please. Much needed. Uh, we also want to, you know, they're not considered that much, but I want to say that the locksmith, uh, the guys that do all the repair, you know, we have to uh, announce them from time to time because they also do their job. Also, the um, Lewis, which is new with us, and communicating with the staff and with the tenants, he's doing good. He's doing a good job so far. And we, he's very uh, attentive. Uh, the office staff, the ones with Fox Hill, they talked about them. Uh, the girls, they did come into a rough situation. Everything was bombarded to them. But yet they have pulled their grounds and we're very appreciated about that. Uh, we really are. And not only that, we also are appreciated to Mr. Record and the staff, Frank. Um, Danny and his staff, his staff that are in these difficult times, the challenges have been overwhelmed with them. Housing is just not Fox Hill, it's just full of housing. And when you look at it, oh my God, I don't know if I could ever do that job. Um, and it's true, uh, Jackie, your staff, the group over there, very lovely people. Um, I want to also thank for the time that Fox Hill um, has asked Danny Perez to help us with hamburgers, whatever it is. He's been very attentive, so, uh, so as Phil Cohen's our councilman, he's been attentive with stuff here as well. But also, I gotta give thanks to Ruben Ramos, because when he had events down there, I just tiptoe over there. <laughs> and I'm not throwing a sign on saying, come on, Carmen. Uh, and they're all very attentive, and it's very appreciated. So we gotta take the good with the bad and be Grateful for what we have. Mr. Recco, you're a very, very respectful man. Um, what you do, not everybody could walk in those shoes. Um, and you are doing the best that you can with what is given to you. Because, you know, HUD, which is the group that is supposed to be here for us, they need to know that they can only work with what is given to them. Much is needed. Much more money has to be poured in because to repair some of these buildings, it's, it's unbelievable. The things that I hear, uh, you know, the asbestos, even here, you know, it's not easy trying to repair these, uh, these pipes here. It's not. But we are very attentive and we are very grateful. Just, um, you know, consider here, uh, see, we have to be respectful to one another. Uh, Treat each other with kindness is what I always say, um, because it will, will give, be giving back to you. you so I want to thank you, Bob, and thank you for this opportunity thank that you, you have gave me all. And the residents thank of you. Manuel Rivera. Thank you. Uh, Manuel Rivera, M-A-N, do we have our eye in our name? Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to start off. Uh, good evening, everyone. Good evening, um, board. Um, I have a bit of a issue with um, some of the stuff that um, 
is always uh, mentioned and never given follow through. Um, a couple of meetings ago, I was at, uh, uh, I think it was Adam Street, that a, a member of the public, and he's also uh, a council member, uh, spoke, and he put, put forth um, some, uh, I guess it's an idea, in regards to the maintenance. Uh, uh, there should be some type of program where the maintenance folks with what the background that they already have that they could expand to help with certain issues um, for the uh, people who live in the buildings where they don't have to wait for an XJ expert to come from some other facility that maybe they could have the skills to do it in-house. So maybe that's something that, um, again, it was um, uh, Councilman Ruben Rabels, I'm not gonna take credit for the idea, um, who did put this out for you guys, and I don't know if anyone, or you have discussed it before so that the uh, people present and all of the um, tenants could uh, feel comfortable that at least you're working for them, and also helping the maintenance workers um, with, you know, any anything that they can get as far as time extra or anything, uh, the extra help. There's, there is um, a thing in New Jersey here, it's called jobsforjersey.com, which helps um, communities um, for the state. I'm sure most of you know that you could ask, can we get extra uh, person down here for 21 days? Uh, this was just given to me by a resident um, who also communicates with you a lot. But I need to uh, just uh, emphasize on that. Can we at least help the maintenance workers um, in any way that you can, whether it's uh, that that was proposed uh, or any time extra and things like this, as well as um, I want to move on uh, to, again, it sort of ties into maintenance, but it's not on them. It's on who is responsible um, for the sidewalks when you walk around buildings from uh, the housing authority. Is it the housing authority two feet from the door, or is it the whole block, or is it city council, or who, who do we go and complain because um, some of these streets, when you get in and out of the doorways, are not the cleanest in town. Is it the council member that they have to call? Their ward member? Um, because, let me tell you, they've been, I mean, I don't want to get into the nitty gritty, but there's been, you know, carcasses of animals dead for days on sidewalks. And I know that this is a, a citywide uh, issue, sir, but if you could look into it, I'm sure that the uh, residents will in, in enjoy it, um, uh, Madam Chair. Um, but this is very important for them. It's, it's, uh, it's quality of life for all of you. know. There's a lot of seniors in this building. There's a lot of people with disabilities and others. They can't be jumping around, you know, stuff. That, uh, you know, so the, those are my points. And again, if you can give the people a little bit more clarity on those things, and in security, you know, when you do hire the security person, I'm sure that the tenants will be grateful if you do an introduction when they get here, whomever it's going to be. Call the tenants, tell them, listen, your new maintenance, I mean, your new security personnel is going to be here, meet them so they can know who you are. Um, that's an important point. As well as, I would also like to know if the props won't answer, but um, there's a resolution tonight that says you're going to appoint two um, community trustees to the board. Can you elaborate as to are these residents of the housing or is this members of the public in general that will be uh, coming to the board having picked those persons yet and is there an application process? Thank you very much. No one else would like to speak?
Okay, good evening, everybody. Yes. I'd like to start with saying I'm, I'm really Excuse glad... Excuse me, guys, can you keep it down in the back? Thank you. I'm really glad to hear that um, all of you have been complimented because you all deserve it. You all listen to our complaints and to our grievances and to our thoughts and you're courteous and sometimes we come back and we come back. I know I have, if I have issues, I fight it out and the patience you show. So you know, it's really um, deserving that you get appreciated and thanked for it. So I'd like to thank you for that. Thank you. The second thing I have is a problem that we have here that I haven't heard get addressed yet and that's people pouring water off the porches. Sometimes you sit outside and you're sitting on a bench and all of a sudden Niagara Falls comes down on you. So I think they're cleaning the balconies. That's the reason, I don't know what the reason is. I like to eat on my balcony. I eat on my balcony and splash comes somebody's water on my balcony. So that's one of the problems. And another problem we have is food being thrown off the balcony. And like yesterday, the Miles outside had pizza to eat. Somebody yeah. threw pizza at them. And that's a problem because it's bringing more mice and bringing more bugs and we're getting Excuse in, me, in the, like, in Excuse me, if you'd like to have side conversations, you can step in the hole. Thank you. You know, so that, that will bring the bugs and they're trying hard to keep it from outside the rats and those things coming around. So that's all I have to say and thank you. Thank you. Motion to close the public portion. Couple more. Oh, yeah. Gabrielle, yes. Gabrielle, Gonzalez. Gabrielle, Gonzalez. Eileen Huber. Oh, I'm Gonzalez, but I'm not Gabrielle. Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Eddie Nelson Gonzalez. I'm sorry. What's your name? Sorry. I apologize. I apologize. G E R I N E L P O. And your first name is Gonzalez. Could you please spell it for me? G O N Z A L E Z. Thank you so much. Well, as the gentleman was speaking here about the rats and stuff, we have a lot of them. Um, they they even on the tenth floor. Um, my um. I can't go to an apartment, I got a studio. And it sucks because I'm asthmatic and it's hard for me to breathe. And I'm next to the incinerator. But when we ask something from something, and not, not these girls, these girls did a lot of us. But when, um, past then, when we ask somebody to do something for us because we need it, it takes seven years. And the roach problem, it really, really sucks. Because my mother's unit, there's an electricity problem, plus there's, there's roaches, there's German roaches, you can't kick them out. They come right back in. And since we got squatters, what can we do about it that they won't go to another apartment? And then they hide and they come back. After, after they you fumigate, you, you, they go to another apartment. That's common sense. And then you got mice that break in we got mice, mice is doing holes everywhere, and luckily they, the girl sent somebody upstairs, they took care of half of it. When you took the stove out, and it was full of feces. The refrigerator underneath was full of feces. Who could live like that? Unless you wait for me to die, you have to do something about it, because people like me are sick, and we need a clean environment. And if we could get that, That'll be the first step to, to working on other things. And if you go out, out here, the sidewalk is, is up, and you see the mouse is going in and out. So if you start from outside, maybe they won't come in. You gotta start somewhere, because you see them a lot over here going in and out. That's it. Thank you. Eileen Huber. 
Thank you. Yeah, I just have one question. Okay. Um, what I noticed that the table that we usually get packages on was removed. Okay. Um, I'm just curious. What it, what happens tomorrow when my packages come? Uh, to, it's going to be in the office. I just you know was was something changed that I don't know about. The table's being used right now for the meeting, and then we put back out as soon as the meeting is over. Oh, okay. I just, you know, just curious. Because yeah, it's like a meeting, now you see it, now you don't. Okay? All right. Thank you. Matilde Mora? Hi, good evening. Happy the morning on the way. Thank you so much. Okay. Hi, good evening. Um, oh, good evening. Just Tanya and Adeline, Jimena, Frank. I know it's been hard for us. Mr. Reckler, I'm just speak to you. I'm the one that's staying in the hotel you accommodated in. To stay in all the time, I'm with the water problem. I got to thank Danny, um, Louis, Maynard, everybody. Such, they're trying, but it's just not happening. Um, it's very frustrating when you come home tired to go to bed and your bed is a fool. Or you want to go to the bathroom and you have water dropping on you and it's dirty water. You understand? So I got it a little loud, you know. It's upsetting, that's all. I pay my rent. I mean, it has nothing to do with them. They, they're trying, they're trying. But right now, I'm in a hotel. So my, it's my last day, and from here, I don't know where I'm going. Because I don't know, the problem continues, I don't know. It's been going on for like two weeks already. The fire department has been here, um, the health department, everybody, it's like crazy. So, I'm, I don't want to be like a kindergarten little girl going to get so long, you know. So I feel bad for them because they always have they always have they always have something. You understand? So I feel bad every time I come to them. But I have to because who am I gonna go to? You understand? But they they're great. They're very great. I, I agree with everybody that said they're great. But you can't handle everything in one minute. But it's devastating because I got a lot of damages and it's it's bad. And I can be in my home and it's, it's not better than home. You understand? It could be a hotel or whatever, but you want to be home. You know, even my little dog is upset. He's not even looking at me. So, basically, I want to say I'm sorry. I know I've been bugging you, but, you know, I want to be home. But I can't go to the home no more. It's like this story. So, we're going to work something out. I think we have a meeting tomorrow at 8 o'clock. And I guess we'll go from there. And fine, thank you. Girls, thank you, because I drive you crazy. Danny, Louis, all of you, thank you. All right, good evening. Thank you. Motion to close public question. Motion. Second. Roll call. Motion. Oh. All right. You don't need to vote. Yeah, we can vote. Vote for it. All in favor? All right. All right. All right. All right. We are now moving on to the report of the executive director. Thank you, Ms. Chairman. I appreciate that very much, and I appreciate all of the residents' comments. Uh, we were here for a really good meeting this past week, and uh, we aren't going to stop. We will continue to be back to you and be listening to all of your concerns. Um, I'd like to give a special thank you to the uh, board leadership uh, and to my staff. Uh, for keeping this place running while uh, I actually took almost, almost two full weeks of vacation. So thank you all uh, for leaving me more or less alone uh, for those two weeks. Uh, issues surrounding security have been a major focus over the last month. Um, you know, last month uh, at our meeting we talked about the things that happened um, over at Harrison, some of the issues we're having, and uh, since that action was taken by the security committee, uh, to pull together a meeting with Commissioner Costato. Um, we, we've been consistently talking about it and working on it. Um, one thing that we did do 
based very much starting at this meeting with resident comments is moved to get bids on security uh, services at our three elderly disabled buildings. Um, it will be, it is before you tonight. Um, once that service uh, is, is in place, it's, it's passed tonight, uh, we would expect that no later than mid-August, maybe sooner, uh, that we will have that person in place. And yes, we will be introducing them to everybody. Uh, that will include one eight-hour shift of the security guard at each location, seven days a week. Um, we anticipate starting the service now from 8 p.m. to 4 a.m. That can change. We, we, I think everyone in our meetings has thought that that was the best time slot. If we do believe over time we should go from 7 to 3 or we should go from 9 to 5, we can talk about that. But we're going to start off there and see how it goes from there. Um, our goal is really to gain that control of individuals entering our buildings. Um, all these issues with folks in the hallways, folks coming into our lobby, folks following other people in. Um, we, I think we can make a significant dent in that. Only visitors authorized by a resident will be allowed to enter uh, the building. And uh, as that program develops, we'll be meeting out here and talking about the most effective implementation for each of our buildings individually. Um, the Hoboken Police Department has been very responsive to our situation um, over the past month. Um, regular patrols and walkthroughs have been taking place. I've been hearing good things at all of our resident meetings. Um, and with, we've got at least four officers assigned to us at any given time. Um, so we're very, very pleased with the Hoboken Police Department response. Um, they are often here with more than four. Uh, but it's really difficult. The, they've made a number of significant arrests over the last month, and yes, we followed through with lease actions um, on those arrests as well. Uh, so those are already been filed with the court, and we've already been pushing on that side. Uh, but it's it's a tough it's a, it's a tough issue. Um, a, a good example of that is that we did have a significant event about a week ago on the Harrison Gardens courtyard. Um, there was, I don't know how to say it, except there was a rumble in the end. Uh, some folks took the initiative to uh, schedule themselves a party and, and, and hire themselves a DJ uh, to come. And uh, we got word of it ahead of time, thanks to Commissioner Reyes. Uh, we were all there. We managed to quell that incident for quite a while that evening. The DJ never got set up. Uh, we wouldn't allow that. Uh, but a lot of people showed up. A lot of people from all over showed up, and uh, it was really peaceful for a while, and then about 11 o'clock or so, it broke loose and people started fighting, and it wasn't fun. And uh, the police came in force, I think you guys would, you guys must have 25 people there? Yeah, at least. Yeah, right. At least, and you uh, calmed everyone back down. And, uh, uh, we worked very closely, jointly with the Housing Authority staff and the police uh, to clear out the place and get it calmed down. Um, we left there about 1, 1.30 in the morning by the time we left there that night. But by that time it was um, calm, a number of arrests were, were made, um, many of the folks that were involved were minors, difficult situations, and I think it's time for us to get the security committee back together, I think next week invite the police and uh, talk over what our next steps are. Uh, we do have some ideas, some things in our back pocket of what we want to do, um, but it's summertime. It's hard out there. Um, we have I have accelerated my normal quarterly meet and greet cycle. We've been out and we're doing them bi-monthly right now. Uh, we've had our second since the pandemic, uh, talking about security, coming up with ideas for each site. Um, talking about the issues that are going on, particularly the issues uh, at Harrison and Andrew Jackson, the issues surrounding our horseshoe back along Marshall Drive, where there's a lot of issues right now, We're talking with the police about those. Noise levels is a real concern. Uh, that we, I think we need to address over the security committee as well. Um, you know, I think we need some type of a program with quiet times. Uh, because this noise is, I think, driving some people not to get their sleep at night, but difficult issues. Um, we'll be meeting with HPD 
Uh, we'll get a security committee together this coming week and uh, for next week, and we'll, we'll try to make some changes in there. Um, our efforts also include that positive change and increase activity for youth. Uh, our nonprofits are back working. Uh, the Resident Services Commission Committee has been working on a plan with resident volunteers to use any downtime at Mama Johnson Field, and I know there, um, I know both Barbara and Erica have been busy with that. Yes. Um, what do you mind? So we have a few of the older gentlemen from the Housing Authority, some residents, some not, but who are interested in chaperoning or starting their own um, programs on the field for the residents of the, of the Housing Authority. Um, some were former residents who want to come back. One of the things that they talked to, to us about at that meeting was um, having some time where they can help the kids before football season, I guess, to prepare for football season. Um, they wanted to have kickball games, um, baseball, um, help those that are playing softball and baseball, have some type of trainings where they can do in the early mornings. Um, one of the things that we were happy to hear from Luthers and Danny was that for the whole month of July and August, the residents would be able to use the field Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays from 7.30 to 10 o'clock at night. And Saturdays and Sundays, it would be open to the residents from 8.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m., which gives them a significant amount of time for our residents to go back onto the field and, and have some free play. So. And we have about five or six individuals currently right now who want to do this. So our hold up on the field of using the field when a program is on there is, is to have a monitor on that field. And somebody that can have their eyes open, somebody that can be trustful, no bikes, no this and that. And I think that program is perfect. So if anyone wants to volunteer down at the field, we're, we're taking names. Uh, so come on in and talk to us. What's the schedule? Um, Mondays, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, we have it from 7.30 p.m. to 10 p.m. And then Saturdays and Sunday, we have it from 8.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Great. Thank you. Good low-cost success. Good low-cost successful program. Uh, we did have a successful community-based basketball tournament this past Saturday, Sunday. Um, over at the basketball court um, with Michael Singleton, a young man that grew up in HHA, and we are working with him to establish a Friday and Saturday night league uh, that would operate through August. So that's in process, and um, we're trying to get that up and off off the ground right now. Um, I guess the times on the league? Uh, right now we're anticipating 7 to 10 p.m. Friday and Saturday nights. We're hoping to start June 22nd. June. June. Did I say June? July. That's what happens when you go on vacation. <laughs> I continue to meet with residents and community members, as mentioned above. Um, and uh, if anyone, I'd like to repeat, and many of you have, uh, wish to schedule a meeting with me individually, uh, feel free to reach out to your manager. But we just got to get an appointment because if you walk in, who knows if I'm going to be there, if I'm in meetings. But feel free to reach out to your manager, reach out to Ms. Lardis at Central Office, or just give a call that will schedule you in for a one on one um, meeting with me. Uh, we've had numerous meetings over the past few weeks and we're continuing with that. Um, our new outreach policy specialist, Corinne has developed our new newsletter for HHA. Uh, this has been our pilot newsletter right now. Take a look on our website. It's on our website. Our next edition that comes out, we'll do a paper edition as well. But we wanted to run up the flagpole. I think it looks good. We've learned some things from that. We're going to be adding some things. We'll take a look at that. So probably uh, right around, I think we decided our, our next edition is going to be in September. We're going to pull these out quarterly. And uh, if you want to get something into the newsletter, feel free to reach out. Um, but I think you're going to see that paper edition coming out right toward the end of summer. We're excited about that. We haven't had a newsletter here in a long, long time. Um, as well, Ms. Marie and Ms. Shaw took the lead in applying for two special sources of grant funding from HUD. Um, 
a safety and security grant application uh, went into HUD that would fund additional camera coverage um, at Monroe and Adams. And yes, we would look for the money for Fox Hill as well. Our vision is to install cameras on each floor, on the elevators, and additional coverage in the mail rooms. That's a little more expensive than you'd think, um, but it's something we've wanted to do for a long time. We do not, here at our elderly disabled building, have camera coverage on each and every floor going up. And uh, we put in a grant for that. We also put in a grant this past month for additional capital fund aimed specifically at increasing REAC scores and crime reduction. Um, they would only allow us in that grant application um, to choose a development, to choose one app. And at this point, we chose Harrison Gardens uh, because we have significant REAC issues over there. Um, and we talked about things like security fencing, access control, REAC specific items, items such as painting and refurbishing our stairwells and hallways through there. Um, so two, two grant applications, and uh, let's keep knocking on wood and hope we get some of that. Um, a special board meeting is being planned for August 1st at 7 o'clock. Mark your calendars. Um, we've got two issues to go over in a public hearing that the board need, needs to meet on. Uh, one is our ACOP um, changes. It's time to do the public hearing and review on that. That's been on the street and reviewed for a couple months now. And the other one is our criminal activity policy, which is in that same boat. Uh, so we need that special hearing, and we're going to do that special board meeting on August 1st. Uh, we've already got the ads out on it. You'll be getting your, your notices on that very soon. Um, we got it today. Yeah, we got it. What's that? That one out today. Yeah, we wanted to put out a placeholder today to make sure we, we, we had your attention. Um, our community rooms are back operating to pre pandemic levels. Um, we're working on getting our service providers completely back on schedule uh, for service to our elderly, disabled, and family buildings. We continue our search for an additional plumber um, that we're ready to hire. Uh, as soon as we find that right person, we bring him or her on. And we are looking to hire a qualified person agent. We've had a hard time finding the right person there. A qualified person agent is a very strange thing for governmental and particularly housing authorities. It takes special training. It takes somebody, not just an accountant, but somebody that's trained as a QPA. Uh, so we are going to be examining the idea of doing a contract-based QPA which we can contract with an outside firm to come in and be our QPA. It gives us a number of benefits, not the least of which is that it raises our bidding threshold. Right now, we have to bid anything over 17.5 and have HUD approval. It would take us up to 40,000 on that, and they would be able to take some of the workload off of Emil's crew for the basic bid specs and the basic purchasing procedures that we do. Um, this, by the way, is also a strong recommendation uh, from the enterprise partners that, as you know, are still working with us, by the way. They're, they aren't gone. Tordy Gallus' contract is over, but the enterprise partner folks are still with us, and they are committed, we hope, to be with us through the end of our entire renovation and redevelopment process. So they're advising us on that, but they're also advising the Housing Authority and getting ready for the future. And one of the things they've advised us on very clearly is that QPA position, along with a couple other changes in, organiza in organization, we have a meeting coming up with them to get into the weeds on that recommendation for reorganizing our staff positions. And we should be back to you, I would think, in the next couple months. Uh, once that summer's over a little bit, vacations are over, uh, we'll be back to you with some reorganization ideas. Um, Hoboken Housing Forward. Uh, our first step is drafting a memorandum of understanding between the city and HHA. Um, the city has responsibility for doing the first draft um, of that memorandum of understanding. Um, <clears throat> we're ready to accept it. So a little encouragement over the city plan to get that MOA would be helpful if anyone that knows it. As we speak, director. As we speak. Thank you, thank you, sir. <laughs> I, I thought maybe somebody might rise to that occasion, Councilman. 
And, uh, uh, but they're doing great with us and we're communicating, but we need that draft document so we can push that forward. Uh, we are moving along with, because that, that's based on them making the next step of having our properties designated as areas in need of redevelopment. The city has, the city retained an engineering firm uh, to perform that necessary, thanks to city council. Uh, they will be performing their initial site visit with us on June, July 29th. July 29th, they will be on site doing their first initial site visit with us for the city's engineering firm. So that's not dead, but it's moving. Yes. Uh, Cheryl, yes. So didn't we already, didn't we have the government come in from HUD and already do an extensive report where they deemed all the buildings? Yeah. 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 So. so why can't the city just take that report? You're gonna, you're gonna have to ask the city why that. I, I think they've got their own regulations and procedures on what has to be done um, in their report for an area in need of redevelopment. And, and I'm not a professional planner. They have told me very clearly, and all the planners, including the planners that we had hired earlier, all agree. They're all like, yes, this needs to be done. So, I mean, I didn't challenge them to say, why don't you use a report that we already have, because we have a physical needs assessment, um, and we have the plan we did, right. so I, I can't really answer you. But you asked them if they could use that? We'd be glad to. Yeah. I'm not sure we're going to get a positive response. I mean, it's just to eliminate a step and get, yeah. you know, now, speed up we, the process. What we have done is give them all that information. We have given them that. They've had, they have it. We've given them all the background information that we have, so they may not have to replicate everything. Yeah, I could I could double check on the city side to see if that's um, if that's a full blown report that they would have to do, or if they can piece together what we've provided to the city uh, to kind of move that timeline a little bit faster. Uh, I'll follow up with the director again. How, how has the timeline been so far with the city in response? Good, good. Uh, but it's been. Three weeks now since we all agreed that a memorandum of understanding would be drafted by the city. It's not terribly long, but we don't want it to drag. Right. I'm keeping my yeah. uh, pressure on this. Should be the highest. It yeah. should be the highest priority, I would think. Right. You know, to yeah. fix our buildings and get get going here. And I do know, for example, that not only was I out for a while, but Chris Brown was out in the planning. He was on his vacation and. Sometimes I think we have to keep holidays. that in mind as well. Unfortunately, it's summer months and people are going away. Yeah, and, and Jessica, who's, who's handling some of her, she's really good too. So Je well. Jessica's been great. Yeah, she's, she's still all the way, by the way. She's keeping in touch with me on a consistent basis, arranged for the site visit uh, for this coming week. So all of that's going. Um, there is a requirement by HUD, and I do know a little more about this one, um, to do, again, a separate obsolescence study. Um, and it is their designation and their regulations coming out of their office in Buffalo. It's called the Special Acceptance Center, a SAC, they call it, um, in order to have our buildings deemed as obsolete. And they will also get our information, but this study must be done. They want their study done. Um, so we are going to be going out for an RFP for those services. We could do this a little later, um, but let's do it. We've got a little downtime right now while we're waiting to work this out, area need to redevelopment with the city. Uh, let's get this off the ground. Uh, so we're working with the Enterprise Partner Group on developing that RFP right now. So hopefully in the next month to two months, you'll be seeing us back um, with an evaluation process uh, with folks to do that project for us. Um, we are arranging an initial meeting with HMFA to discuss future allocations of tax credits. Um, and that first conversation is going to be, we're coming, <laughs> you know, 2023, we're coming. Right, right, oh, uh, it's probably gonna be, we'll, we'll talk about 9% tax credits, but we're gonna go after 4% mostly. 9% um, are, are more lucrative, but they're also very much smaller. They don't give out a lot of 9% and it's a very expensive process to apply for them. 4% tax credits aren't as lucrative, but we did our strategic planning 
financial takeoffs based on 4% tax credits. So, so nine will be a bonus. Nine will be a bonus. That's right. That's exactly right. Director, have we, have we engaged um, Senator Stack, Senator Cunningham, uh, and Senator Sacco at all in, in that conversation specifically about those yeah. tax credits? Not specifically yet. Okay. So it might not be a bad idea if we could maybe arrange something to just sit down and have a little cup of coffee with them and tell them where we are? Yeah, I, I, think, it would, I think it would make sense to get the, the entire Hudson County contingency to, yeah. to sit down and yeah. have that conversation. Okay, we can work on that together? Yeah, what are they? I'd like to. Thank you. Um, and we are going to be aiming for a, a, a special board meeting probably September, October to, to with the enterprise partners to really bring everyone up to speed again with the board and the residents. That'll give us some time, we'll have some progress, and we'll be able to come back to everyone on where we are. Um, and again, my team and I are available. If you've got anyone we need that would like to to an update on this, whether it's a, a group at the library or whether it's a group of, of uh, a Rotary Club or whatever, we'll be glad to come and bring everyone up to speed. Um, uh, our renovation project here is, is in process. It's really getting close, folks. Three job meetings are held. Materials are in order. It was reported this week that the lighting upgrade material finally got here. Uh, nothing like a pandemic supply chain. So uh, we should start seeing some construction work started here over the next month or so. We'll have a meeting with you to make sure you know exactly what we're doing and where we're going. Um, housing for Hoboken, I think that uh, I talked to the chair earlier that there's a motion, a resolution that was mentioned earlier. I think our intent is to table that. Correct, that's correct. We'd like to table that resolution. Today. So when that comes up for a vote, we'll table that and come back around in the next month. Uh, vacancy issues, uh, attachment one is the monthly vacancy report. We did have eight newly, newly leased units in May, and we had six transfers that were affected. Uh, we had three residents vacate their apartments, which leaves us with that 94% occupancy rate as of July 1st. Our initial goal is 95%, which we're very, very close to. And I don't know if uh, uh, Frank wants to say anything else on our vacancy push right now. But we're getting really close. Yeah. Very close. Um, yeah. I know and tomorrow, tomorrow we're going to be uh, talking about the final Jackie. units. Yeah. There's the final 40. Those are the final 40 units to get into. After we get into that, we have to occupy them. That is so exciting because at that point, so just so that you know, uh, Monroe, 100%. Uh, Fox Hill right now is at 98%. Um, we have Adams is at 99%. So we're getting there. CCG is at 98%. Um, Andrew Jackson North just got us up to 95 right now, 96. So we started out with 181 vacancies one year ago, right? So between the, all the teams and maintenance and all the things that's been done to get to that point, opening up the waiting list, getting people to show up, now we have it all together. I think we're at that point where in a couple of months, the problem we're going to have is that when people want to transfer, we're not going to have to deal with the transfer to so we have to So that's a, another trouble to get to when we get there, but that just means that we're going to be fully occupied. I anticipate before the end of this year, because what's left in front of us can be tackled in the last quarter. 95% uh, we have been so close every month, we're like, we think we're going to hit this month. Already the lease ups that we have currently get us even that much closer, but that's, that's what we're going for. So it's looking very promising as far as uh, the agency. This month was a little bit lighter because the staff that we do have that does the lease ups also was in charge of doing We had, as many people know, we have our 100% um, inspection of our units, which we already completed with the family side. So by doing that, they needed each team needed a, a clerk or a manager and somebody for maintenance. So that pulled some of the staff. But that also we were able to get a lot of um, information on some of the housekeeping issues, some of the other issues that, that we need to address that will help with some of the other problems like my city and cockroaches and that kind of stuff. Families coming next week. So next week you guys will have your full building inspection, which is gonna give uh, maintenance Lewis the eyes for the next four or five months, we can put a, a, a schedule in place for all the repairs. 
we can get to everybody that, that is going to need a crack tomorrow. So the most important thing for us is to identify all the work that's out there, line it up by importance, and then send you communication so that you know we did come to your apartment. This is what we found. We will be in your apartment in the next amount of time. It may be two weeks, it may be three weeks, it may be a month. But at least we want to be able to communicate with you that we are aware of the things that we're doing. We um, so next, next week is the end of our regular inspections that, that we need to complete. And then in the, in the end of the month, on the final week of the month, we have REACT coming to Andy Jackson. So Andy Jackson will be, we just had the, our inspection, which man, we never know when they're coming for REACT. So at least we got a little heads up. We had Verizon today working on a lot of the boxes that, that we've been fighting for a long time. They had a representative stop by the office. They gave us a number. Louis hooked up with the guy who was in and out of the building today. So those kind of things are the things that are going to add up, right? So the money that was left over from the elevator allowed us to fix the ramp and that extra million dollars that we're saving in construction are big points off of the REACT stuff that, that's coming into it. So hopefully to that, the horizon boxes, um, there's going to be another big push for the ACs. These are all REACT things. We get the occupancy right. Lewis is going to be able to pass REACT. I'm telling you, by next year, I think we can really put this together. Obviously, we want the redevelopment, but we want to be right without the redevelopment. If we can get that, that's incredible. But if we can't get that, we want to be fully occupied and we want our units to be right. I know that it's tough, and as I'm looking at you, I know that every person in this room has an issue with their apartment. So everybody here, we have something that we need to fix. So the reality is, it's like, so I see, I see the frustration and what people tell us is like, you already inspected my apartment last month and you already told me that. What's going to be this newest inspection, right? But we're not forgetting about you, we're just gathering stuff and um, that's it. Thank you, Frank. Thank you. I, director, I'd just like to say that um, although I see and I'm very happy to see that overall we are at 94% of, of vacancies, I do have some concerns with Andrew Jackson and Harrison Gardens, which are the most vacant apartments. And the reason I have my concerns is, as many of you know, I work in this community. I see the need for housing. So when I look and I see 65 units that families could be using that are not being used, it's an issue for me. So I'm just hoping that, I know in the past that we've heard, well, people don't want to move there. Okay, so if you're called and you don't want to move there, let's move on to the next person. Because when you're in need, you take what's available. So I get it, we can't always have 100%, but I would hope that we would work harder on those amps to get those. I did want to tell you, we do have um, a plan in place for I'm sorry, I'm sorry, we do have a... Um, we have a plan in place for Harrison Road. So what we're going to do is, because it has been difficult and we have apartments that are ready, we're going to say anybody who's on our transfer list, we have 250 people on our transfer list right now. So what we're going to do... Okay. I'm going to go to the microphone yeah, yeah, yeah. so I really oh, can sure. hear you. Thank you. Sorry about that. It's okay. So, so the, the plan is to... Um, we have over 250 families on our transfer list right now. So since we're having such a hard time with outside lease subs and comparison gardens, we're going to go through the entire transfer list to see, and these are families who are in desperate need of a bigger unit, right? Offer them Harrison Gardens, you know, lease up 100% Harrison Gardens, the vacant units that leave in the other buildings are leaseable as soon as we fix them. So then our, I think Harrison Gardens is probably going to be 100% before you know it. That's great. Right. That's So right. that, that'll be, that, that's what's coming for us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but, but it's a struggle. Local 55 came to see you last month, and and Jackie and under Jackie's leadership, they've done a great job in doing that. Um, but we also have a request in now to bring another local union in. That request went in, um, and now it's uh, we're going to keep the pressure on how to approve that. And because part of our issue has been the tough units. If somebody moves out of that three bedroom, four bedroom, five bedroom, they take a lot of work, a lot of work. And uh, we need some extra help with that. And, and hopefully we can get that union in. We can, we can have two unions operating under our under Jackson's leadership, and I think we can make a real dent in that. But we agree with you. So it's what's, what's the uh, vacancy is huge. What's the consequence if we don't pass the reacts work this time around? Well, I think the consequences are what we what we've had in the 
past. I think they're going to continue to challenge us on that, um, and we're going to continue to get better. I don't see them, Commissioner, doing anything different than they've had. Um, they are really, really pleased with our redevelopment. They understand our challenges. They understand our buildings are 70 some years old, particularly Andrew Jackson and Harrison. We've been highly complimented on the progress we've made at our three elderly disabled and at the CCG. We brought our point scores up this year's REAC on all of those, but, and Harrison too, but Andrew Jackson's really tough, and they know that. So I think if we can bring our score up even moderately on there, they're going to be very happy with it. By the way, that one grant application we have is specifically aimed at bringing that score up. So we'll see where we wind up on the other side. But if you're asking if I believe that they're going to come in and sanction us in any way, no. No, if that's your question. Thank you. Yeah. Um, getting close. Um, special projects. Um, the Housing Finance Agency has approved the extra work Adams and, and Jackson and Andrew Jackson. Um, the boiler work at Adams is underway right now. Um, we are working on the final closing documents of the Housing Finance Agency loan grant. Uh, we have some funding remaining and we have a change order in front of you tonight uh, that's going to refurbish the Harrison Gardens courtyard. Yay. Uh, so it's going, to, it's going to attack those papers in there, and the problem we're having with that shifting. I'll bring that up in a minute or two as well. So um, we hope to get that done very, very soon, certainly before winter. The work on the facade of Monroe and Adams is completed, okay? and we have a resolution before you tonight uh, for emergency generators. If you look at my prior reports, I did tell you that this project would resolve all of our emergency generator issues. Unfortunately, the bids came in too high. Um, we are not able to completely resolve all of our emergency generators. What our goal was was to have emergency generators that were less than five years old at all of our locations. That cannot happen with this bid. Prices are out of control. They're, they're just huge particularly bidding prices. People are, I think, bidding high because they don't know what's going to happen over the next year, two years. So we were able to get all of our emergency generators except for Andrew Jackson North. There's four buildings that we were going to have to come back to you with another cycle of capital funds this coming year to finish off the generator project. We, we, can't, we can't use uh, the city grant, CV. We will be applying for CDBG money on that as well. I mean, we'll use any... That'll, that'll, be, that'll be next year's allocation. But, but that'll be next year's allocation yeah. now. We thought, and our architect, and our engineers thought that we'd be able to afford it in this bid package. So now we've got to go out again for a new bid. So the good, the good thing on the on the uh, block grant funding is that... I'm sorry, I'm sorry, obviously. On the block grant funding is that the Housing Authority is pretty much the only uh, organization that gets that capital improvement money. So we get, as the authority, we get all that money almost every year. Um, the problem is that that money is not necessarily always enough. Right. So next year we'll reapply and we'll we'll use it how we need to. But, you know, but we're getting it, so that's the good thing. We appreciate the city for that very much. Um, on a management report, uh, as we'll see when we uh, review the audits, uh, we have had a long-standing issue with an audit finding in our files, on our audit, on our management files. Uh, now that we have that new software system in place, the vacancy initiative is winding down. I think Frank has turned his attention to those file findings. Um, we have reached out to a respected housing organization and brought them on. Um, Man McKay to provide and conduct a sample review of files at each of our sites. Um, we have moved ahead with that endeavor. The study is complete and we're going out with training to the staff on that topic. Anything else, Frank, that you want to mention on um, what we're doing with Man McKay and the files? So, uh, 
Oh, there you go. So, very specifically, there is this thing called the EIV. EIV is what gives us the eyes on what people need when, when they pay their taxes. That report is a slight, slightly behind about six to eight months. So when someone first moves in, and they first do up, we can't get any ID for them. It takes three to four months before we even get one. When we get it, we're gonna get their income from seven months ago, eight months ago. But we have it. So why it's so important that the EIB gets looked at at the point of the certification is because if someone who's coming to us at this particular moment telling us, hey, I'm not working. Okay, but you said that last year and I see that you were working. When did you get fired? And then we can go back and recapture some of that money. Obviously, the rent is based on the income. So if we don't know what the full income is, we're not collecting what we should be collecting. The EIV is tied to another Thing that's called the IBT, Income Verification Tool. The Income Verification Tool is a report that we get from HUD that is now telling us how many people for how many years have not reported their income properly. That number, we saw this number months and months ago, and that's when we started the process with them, okay? Because the problem is something that needs to be uniform, when it gets tackled with the tenants, it has to be tackled properly. And when we do it, what we're going to be able to do is guarantee that everybody that's here, if they stand up and get counted, and they do the right thing, they will always be able to be here no matter what we do with the government. If we don't take the steps to educate, capture, and get everybody on the right boat, it's the equivalent of somebody who worked off the books their whole life and then they can't collect social security at the end. It's a tough reality for a lot of people, right? So we still have two years in front of us that we can take this time to educate, to build, and to get everybody from the management to the tenants on the same page so that we can collect the proper rent and we can impress the folks that are going to give us the money for the redevelopment. Or else they're going to say, this is not matching up. And right now, HUD's numbers know that we're not matching up. And that's what we've been kind of working towards. So this this finding, this finding has been here for a while, for I think this is the fifth or sixth year straight, right? You're still gonna see it probably one more year because the curve is gonna change after this training that we do. We have a training scheduled starting the first Monday in August, for five Mondays in a row. We're going to sit together with the help of uh, Valerie. Um, she is with Enterprise, but she represents HUD. And we're just going to go through all the basics. We're going to tie in what we're working on as far as the criminal policy. We're going to tie in our ACOP, the changes with the ACOP. We're going to read the ACOP as a group. We're going to go through each one of those things. At the end, I'm going to give the opportunity for every manager to start reset. Listen, we can sit here and point fingers of what's been wrong for however it's been wrong, and that's not going to help us tomorrow. If we start right now, we educate, we give everybody the tools, and then we have to hold people accountable at that point, right? So what I say is we give a good training, we give 90 days after the training, and that's when we have to then be serious about our enforcement with our staff, right? And my whole goal is if we do this right, we're going to be able to show a revenue stream fairly quickly. Because what we're going to do is we're going to set up a team that's going to be a special team to allow families to enter into a repayment. If there's any money that was owed, it's going to be very easy for them to afford because it has to be part of an affordable formula. But what that does is kind of like, the only example I can give you is revolving credit versus a loan. Instead of feeling like you're drowning in debt, you get that one loan and then you're going to get out of it at some point. The goal of this is to give everybody that feeling they're not in the red. We know that this happened. I know understand, we understand COVID happened. We understand this happened. But we have to make it right now. By doing that, HUD, for every repayment that we can take from someone who's outstanding money to us right now, and put them on a long-term repayment, that will give us the tool to say to HUD, this family's compliant, this family's compliant, this family's compliant. So what we need to do is have a very clear goal like we just did with vacancies for rent collection our outstanding um, rents and what's happening with our recertifications will all get fixed and the files get fixed with the training, with counting every family, and at the end of it, 
most importantly with Kareem's help, an educational piece. We need to get everybody to understand we can't help you fix your apartments if we don't have the income that comes from the prop from the work things that we probably reported. So we're gonna work on both sides of it. And, and like I said, it's not a bad on the tenant, it's not a bad on the employees right now. Let's hit reset on both sides and let's find a way out of this. If we do it together, we can bring revenue that will be counted every month. We'll start to see it. I don't know if you know or not, but what's the percentage of folks that fall in in that category? Okay. It has to be a large number. Very large. That's you why said, it can't you be said done. It was a million, almost a million dollars. Well, a million dollars is the outstanding rent. There's five and a half million dollars of unreported income over the last four years yeah, that have to be cool. added to the outstanding rent. So rather than just go after the outstanding rent and then later on find out that we have to do something else. We're going to do an entire piece where we grab the family and we say, listen, this is what happened, this is what you owe, this is where we're going, let's get you in a place where this is affordable for you, we're good, now you got to be good. And the other part of that is stand up and get counted. If you're not on the lease, this example that happened right now with the trip, right? Now uh, we had this awesome trip and people are coming to the office to tell me, hey, I need a ticket for this one. Oh, but they're not on the lease. So if they're not on the lease, Oh, let me add them to the lease. Wait, you want to add a family member that we've been begging you to count to go on a trip out to a water park? So, what we want to do, and again, it's back to education. So, how do we get everybody educated? And I think that the gentlemen who are working with the basketball stuff are great gentlemen to start with. We have a lot of men who are not being counted in our system that we know are here, that we know are good guys. They need to stand up and get counted or they won't be there. When the time comes for the redevelopment, they say, well, this is my spouse. Well, get yourself on the lease. Not when, not when your mom dies and now you want to tell me that you were on the lease for four years. No. So all this is a part of it. Yeah, just a couple just a couple things if I can share with the gentleman. Um, so on the call that we had with the audit, this is a very serious Guys, finding. I'm going to ask you to please keep the conversation either outside or quietly in the back. This is a very serious finding, and it's like Frank was saying, it's occurred for the last five to six years, which is quite alarming. Uh, we do have to accept some accountability with our management staff um, in, in doing a better job of not only collecting the rent, but having surveys yearly, doing a more micro detailed element of collecting and who's paying what, whose jobs are what, who's living where, um, we also dropped the ball with the findings. It's not just that people aren't paying the rent, but you know some of the reports that were found were missing the EIV reports. Uh, there were two missing the signed rent addendums. So we have to do a better, and that was only after looking at 40 files. So if you look at every file, I'm sure there's a lot more errors that our management team is not, and, we're not looking to point the finger, like you said, Frank, we're trying to get better. We've had years, though, of this lack of accountability for your position. Um, and that is what has stemmed, and, and we're lucky to have you. You seem like you're on top of this, you're doing a good job. It needs to, it, this is a point where we need to sit down, if we're a business, right? We need to get every rent, we need to get every dollar, and the residents need to understand twofold, one, be, Coming out of COVID, just because you were told that you didn't have to pay your rent, you you eventually have to pay that rent back. And I think a lot of residents don't understand that they think it's just forgiven. Uh, those rents are still on the books and still need to be paid, and we are going to be collecting them. Um, that's one, and then twofold. If you're lying on these reports, you know, in my opinion, there should be a consequence or you know, not giving accurate information. If you, if you make ten thousand dollars a year, and you're only saying you make eight, when it comes back that that EIV report says that you're making ten, I think there should be a, a consequence. Uh, whether it's monetary, whether it's community service, I don't, I don't know the answer. But I think there should be something that holds these people accountable for paying what they should be paying. Um, and we'll get more into some of the more details with the with the audit that we found on our call uh, when we when we approved that. But that's those are the comments that I want to make sure we we get on the books. Okay.
Sure. Uh, Frank, uh, the, the software system that we have now, this kind of automates a lot of it, right? This, this helps us through. Well, that's what allowed me to see it for right. the first time. Right. So that's why it took all those months to get to October. It took, so I started in December, and the first step was to, to get to the software. Right. When we, the software was complete, we finished at the end of August, September, and I run my first couple of reports. That's when I first started to notice things that were just not right in the old system. The old system was a nightmare. I don't wish it on anybody. It was just antiquated the way that it worked. That's, it, it is what it is. So many housing authorities have it. But it had inherent pitfalls that allowed these mistakes to happen. Right. One of the beauties of our, of our new software is that it has so many built-in catchings that don't allow us to, to fall off because then we're like, eh, eh. So now, then there is the numbers that we think we have, there is the numbers that exist in the software, there is the numbers that HUD has. Those were three completely different numbers. Right. So as we were going like this to it, we are now at the point where the reality and our software match, we have to get one more match. Pick. Okay. Once we get that, that's the trifecta. Now we have all three things, which is how it should work. My software, the, the, what's on the ground, what's out there should match to what PIC has. Once we get to that point, that's where So we're talking with Qua and explaining to them, because they, they keep hearing these reports of vacancy, and they're like, that's fantastic. But why isn't your PIC number going up? It's because our PIC number is not changing because of recertification. People are not recertifying. During COVID, they weren't, so that is part of this as well. So, so and, and to the point, I mean, are we looking at continued ways to automate some of those certifications as well? So it's not your typical, you know, situation, right? We're, we're changing yeah. that process as well. Yeah. So part of it is that we're okay. opening the portal, and yep. the portal should Perfect. be very soon. The training is going to include portal training for our managers so that we can offer it and offer letter to all our tenants where they can pay rent, make, follow their own work orders. Um, there's so many functions that are there. They can be certified there. Right. We can communicate. Right. So the portal is coming. That's okay. in a few weeks. Awesome. Thank what? you. Yeah. Just a quick question. Yeah. What, what, after year one yes. that we had the finding, why didn't we get the software? So we were trying so year one we find the finding, right? Why isn't it, uh, we, need to, we need to fix the system. Right, not year, year five. Yeah. I'm so, just curious. The software cost us pretty near two hundred thousand dollars. During those years, when I first got here, we had roofs that were falling in. It was raining inside of units. We, we had issues everywhere in this housing authority on the physical side. And for those first three years, the decisions were made: Are we going to fix the roof? Are we going to repair a kitchen, or are we going to get the software? And we decided to fix the kitchen. We decided to fix the pipes rather than the software. And the management director at that time did not push hard from the other side, but, but I'm not blaming her at all, because I think I would make those decisions again. When, we walked, when I walked in the door and those physical conditions were here, that's what we did for the first three years that I was here. We stabilized this housing authority so it wasn't getting worse and worse and worse. We finally, the light finally came up that we had that $200,000 we could go after, get the new software. We wanted to do it from day one, but it was just not a good decision at that point. What do you spend your money on? Thank you. All right, uh, I did put attachments on the major projects over the last 30 days for maintenance. Uh, I'm proud of what maintenance is doing out there, and special repair projects for maintenance. We will talk about the audits and the approval side. Um, the finance department has been busy with the Housing Finance Agency and working on these audits. Um, resident Services, a very successful um, Atlantic, Atlantic City trip. Who won? Well. Anyone Who out in Atlantic City? It was great. The one. I don't see that money. Hey, we got a percentage, right? The, uh, we mentioned the Doherty Park um, trip before, and uh, Daniel Perez couldn't deal this tonight. 
uh, but we did provide in my attachments the highlights of things coming up. But we do have two special presenters from the Hoboken Public Library uh, that are with us. We got Andrew and Allie uh, from the library. Folks, come on up and say hello to everybody. Fun Frank. Fun Frank. Uh, good evening, Director. Good evening, Board. Thank you so much for having us. Um, Hoboken Public Library is striving to be, bring our resources and services outside of our building directly to the community um, through our collaboration with Danny Perez and the HHA administration. We are exploring potential patron needs to develop programming ideas for all residents of the Hoboken Housing Authority. And um, we'd like to talk about some of the things we've been doing so far. Um, it's a pleasure to be here, and it's a pleasure to get to know the seniors in the senior buildings. I have um, been visiting uh, Adams, Monroe, and Fox Hills um, with the pop-up library. We did this uh, during the Senior Mother's Day luncheons, which was so much fun. We also had a staff member provide the music. We also came to the Senior Father's Day barbecues, which again was so much fun to meet everyone. We brought surveys, um, free books, library card sign-up, and just trying to get a sense of who the community is and get to know their needs so that we can best serve them. We're going to be visiting Fox Hill monthly with the pop-up library on the fourth Friday of every month. Um, and we will be starting, well that started in June, but we'll be starting monthly pop-up library visits to Monroe and Adams starting in August. We also want to refresh the library corners. Um, each of the three buildings has a library room and uh, we, you know, would love to bring some new books. Some residents told me they've read all of them. <laughs> they need some new books. Um, so we want to see what we can do to improve the services there. Um, we've also, you know, we had, we were blessed to have uh, this sort of outpost in the heart of um, the housing authority on the west side at, at the uh, learning center, which I guess used to be a, a police or security location. It's a, it's a small room, but we're starting to reopen it. Unfortunately, we'd like to be open a lot more, but on Wednesday and Friday afternoons, we're there. And like I said, it's kind of a small facility, so instead of trying to do everything out of this one location, we've divided in sort of very focused service blocks. So on Wednesdays, um, between uh, 12 and 2, we have a, a job resource center, so we're helping people with resumes. We also have our community social worker there at that time. Then on uh, Wednesday from 2 to 5, we have a drop-in tech assistance. So, you know, if you're having trouble with your email or your phone or whatever, um, I think that this, you know, for a lot, of, for all of us, the kind of constantly changing technical world is uh, a challenge. And, you know, it's all about access, so we're trying to, you know, broaden that access. Then on Fridays from 12 to 2, again, the community service worker is there. So this is a social worker training there to help people uh, get you know access to uh, social services deal with uh, you know food shortages things like that she's there for that uh, and then from uh, three to five we have fun Fridays which is the uh, youth services come out we have a bunch of different programs for the children uh, it seems to be very popular and uh, it's just great to be there it's a real honor to uh, be there and serve those patrons and briefly I just want to touch upon some upcoming events that we have uh, we started our book bike outreach, so you may have heard about us going to different parks around the city. We started small and we're um, expanding that service. Um, so one area that meets some of the needs um, of HHA residents is the 7th and Jackson Resiliency Park. We'll be bringing the book bike there every single Thursday starting in August uh, with a story time. So special children's story time will be at that time too. Uh, folks can get books, library cards, and this can be a place where they can come and return books as well, so they don't have to make it down to the library. Uh, we'll be hosting our summer reading uh, closing celebration at Mama Johnson Field in August, and our youth services team is so excited to start a relationship with Mama Johnson Field, starting to bring our programs there again. We'll be hosting an art class here at Fox Hill in August, and uh, we'll also be celebrating, refreshing the library corner. So it'll be a fun day. And lastly, this was just confirmed today, Danny has been the most amazing partner of ours in, in getting these programs together. We'll be hosting senior fiestas in celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month uh, in September and October at each of the three senior residences. Um, 
there's, I can't even list everything, but salsa dancing and karaoke and bingo and all sorts of things will be going on. So excited and, and so honored for the opportunity to connect with the seniors and the residences. And, and we're so, um, we're open, just everyone here, uh, to everyone's feedback. Um, we just want to make sure we're providing the service that's needed. Thank you. I, I just want to say real quickly, then we'll pass it around to you, but thank you to the library. The library's really been stepping out. They've been coming out of the box. They've got these great people to sign now, and they're looking for things they can do. And, and we're seeing it. We're seeing you all the time, so thank you. Uh, I, I also just want to say that uh, you guys have been fabulous for us at the shelter. Um, you know, dealing with the most vulnerable community, no one wants to deal with that particular population. So yeah. we, we, yeah. we met, and one of the main issues was that they weren't able to obtain library cards. So uh, you all came out and um, surveyed the group You're down today. And, you know, so I just wanted to say thank you very much. Our guests thank you. And I'm sure um, our residents thank you as well. Because you guys are definitely out in the street. So you're on the blocks, so we appreciate it. It's an honor. Thank you so much. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Exactly. Um, I also want to say thank you, but I also want to know, could we have flyers? Because I do see a lot of the, um, what the library does, they do go out as pixels and we see it on the social media. But what happens to those that unfortunately don't have it? I think always the paper flyer, we can't get away from that. So make sure that we're putting it up in the building. Like this schedule that you gave us, I'm pretty sure if they were in the residential building, I think parents would bring their kids up, but yeah. if they don't have time to look at it, then we don't know until maybe the day of or it's too late. So just have yeah, a paper Yeah, Absolutely, and I don't have to tell you guys this. Communication is one of the biggest challenges we've got. Um, we heard about your newsletter at this meeting. Mm -hmm. We'd love to see if we can integrate some of our stuff into that. And 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 if you come to us with channels that you think that we can start feeding content into to make these announcements, please. Like that is water to the starving person. Give it to me. I'm We're ready. also working with Danny. We started writing letters to residents. Um, we started with the senior buildings, um, where we wrote letters of introduction and enclosed some flyers. And we hope to do that on a monthly basis. And if that's too much, maybe every other month. Um, where folks can get the hard copy flyers under their door. Um, but if you, you know, anytime I'm here, because I'm going to be here once a month, I can come and replenish any flyers and bulletin boards. Um, yeah, we love the paper. <laughs> we love paper. <laughs> what, what about the ID project you guys are working on? Oh, yes, yes, yes. So we're working on an ID project. So uh, part of the feedback that we received in our, we go to the shelter every week um, on Thursdays. We also go to the St. Matthew um, Lunchtime Ministry um, every Wednesday. And something that we hear again and again and again is a need for help getting ideas. Um, it's just, it's identification. It's, it's, it's something that everyone deserves to have um, at the bare minimum. And it just, it opens so many doors and it's so necessary. Um, and a lot of folks use the library to get it. So with our social worker um, and a few librarians and I, uh, we have a program called Project ID. Um, we brought it to the shelter today. We actually helped a couple of folks there. Um, and next week, we're hosting it at the library where all are welcome to come. And we can't give people ideas, but we can help them get the resources, the documents that they need, help them make appointments at the DMV, um, anything they need, any birth certificate, any questions they have. And we'd love to bring it to the, to the residents as well. We can do this is like our pilot, and we're hoping to bring it. And we're also in talks with uh, Director Pellegrini and a council person, I don't remember the name of uh, to, to try to get a mobile DMV van. No, uh, Assembly Raj or Pershing? Yeah. yeah um, we'll we'll try and, state, state Assembly Raj or Pershing. Yeah. Um, to try to get the mobile DMV van here to Hoboken. I know it was here a few years ago. It was here. And, and so we want to we want to bring it back. And, and we'll try by City Hall. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Assemblywoman. Yeah. Assemblywoman. I'm just on track. Assemblywoman Nat Chaparro. We reached out to her, we're reaching out, and um, and Dr. Pellegrini is really excited to, to work with us. Awesome. Yeah. 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 Yes, yes, I was just going to do that. Um, and I wanted to say, <laughs> we're going to get through our programs, we're going to say all this is happening with the support of, of the relatively new director, Jenny Poo. Uh, she's the new library director, um, and, and she's played a huge part in uh, transforming the library, at least from my point of view. She hired me, she hired Allie. So, um, <laughs> and you've seen some of those antiquated uh, yeah. 
hundred percent. I couldn't agree more. But I, I couldn't do it without a stellar team and with a great partner with the House of Authority. And I, I do want to do, have one ask. The library is undergoing our strategic planning. We'd love, love to have a session or, or two at the House of Authority. All will be invited to give input to us building the next three to five years. So I'll be following up with, with you all about that. We'll provide snacks, of course. Uh, so, so thank you again. Okay, okay, <laughs> great. Thank you, Ali. thank you, Andy. You'll see a lot of us around in the community. Thank you, Reverend, for your kind words, thank you. Can I just have We should, we should really talk about potentially having an annex in our repositioning, specifically the, in the housing yard. I was when going we talk, to. When we talk about the amenities that yeah. we're going to supply for our residents, yeah. not, not, I think not, not, a, a, not a room, bar. right? Yeah, not, not a room, room but not a room an entire like annex. Like Chicago does. Yeah, yeah, yeah like an entire annex. Yeah. Chicago Senior Housing Library Branch, they have four of them. Yeah, yeah. And they're beautiful. They're beautiful. Ours will be better. I like that. I'm competitive like that too. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, that concludes my report. Oh, right. Wow. Oh, Oh, Resolution, Resolution number 2022-0701. Resolution of the Housing Authority of the City of Kabul to approve the minutes for the June 9th regular June 9th, 2022 regular board meeting. I'll make a motion. Second. Director Cogio. A Forbes. Uh, yes. A a Lewin? Yes. B. Rass? Yes. M. Russo? Yes. J. Sanford? No. E. Seitzman? Yes. Resolution number 2022-0702. Resolution authorizing payment of the monthly list of bills for the Hoboken Housing Authority. I'll make motion. a motion. Second. Second. Any questions? Concerned? Director, call the vote. A. Forbes? Yes. A. Mastato? Yes. A. Lewitt? Yes. B. Reyes? Yes. M. Russo? Aye. J. Sanford? No. E. Seitzman? Yes. Resolution number 2022-0703, resolution to adopt and approve the single audit for fiscal year 10-1-2019 to 9-30-2022. Thank you. Of the Housing Authority of the City of Hoboken, conducted by Paul Carey and Company CPA. I'll make a motion. Second. Any questions? Yeah, well, we, we do have the auditor with us tonight as well. And, and just what one quick correction: that was 9:30, 2020. I'm so sorry. Uh, and I got black. Yeah, yeah. I got to there. I just and Emily, you might as well head this way too. Hi, good evening. Uh, this is Mike Maurice. He's from Bulgarian Company. He's a partner at the firm. And he's going to present both this resolution and the following one, which is a, a resolution to approve the audit for the, uh, the subsequent fiscal year. So it's 10-1-2019 it's to 9-30-2020, along with 10-1-2020 to 9-30-2021. I just have your application. Could you spell the last name? Good evening, everyone. Um, let me just first start. Uh, there was a uh, question at the um, finance committee meeting on uh, Tuesday that Commissioner Gustavo had uh, regarding the 10% of the minimum rate. And I told you I'd get back to you. So the, um, the housing authority, the, the federal government allows you under uh, 
um, the uniform guidance, which is what the single audit is, is, uh, is adheres to, um, provides for a federal recognized rate that allows the housing authority or non-federal entities to charge indirect costs to a grant. So in terms of- I'm sorry, you charge the work costs? Indirect. Okay. Indirect costs of procuring the grant. We don't do that. Um, most of your grants, your, your biggest grant is your operating subsidy. Uh, that's done, um, the procurement for that. The subsidy forms are done by Bill Catchin, your, your fee accounting that's included in your fee, so his, annual, his monthly fee, so there is no uh, de minimis rate charge to any of your grants for indirect costs. So we can't save money by doing it? No, because we're not charging anything to the grant. You're, you're keeping all the money. There's I no got you. So if you were a separate entity, uh, not-for-profit and you were applying for a grant, you could charge costs to the grant to get the grant. And that and that's that federal um, de minimis, that 10% that you have. Gotcha. We're you. not doing that. So. Do you have the other, quite the administrative? Or is yeah, that yeah, certainly. I, I can answer that question now. Yeah. So you, you would ask the, the, the change in the administrative costs. Uh, that was made up of uh, several different items. Uh, there was uh, roughly $100,000 in additional legal fees related to the uh, RAD. Uh, program that we're doing. A hundred percent of that? A hundred thousand? Yeah, because right? legal, legal was separate in a separate category. This was put under um, administrative costs. But and was that was that legal for RAD or just a legal? No, legal for the RAD for those for doing that work. Um, many of those costs were reimbursing the capital fund. There was additional A&E fees and engineer, architect and engineering fees. There were the um, costs for your consultant to go around to see what the needs and assessments were under RAD, you have to come up with a, uh, the needs and assessments and improvements. That there was about fifty thousand cost for that, and there was roughly four percent increase in uh, employee salaries. So if we if we pay our consultant a fee, right, that's not included in that fee. No, that was that was charged to expense, and it was in the capital fund count. So a lot of that was offset by the capital fund grant. It didn't affect. You're operating. Can you, can you send, is there a way to get a breakdown of all that? Uh, you'd have to go through the line item by line item on the general ledger to, to, to put all that by vendor. Yeah. So what I would like to what I wanted to see was what were the costs that we paid the consultant, and what are the costs that are new to our administrative uh, umbrella, essentially. So, okay. I get that could be done. We could work with that, ML. That That's not part of my my order. Yeah, we need, I got we need you. to go into that detail I, I, of those I, costs. I, yeah, is that too much to, to ask for? Yeah. So I, I think uh, what, what, what Mike was saying is that a, a large component of that was as part of the the RAD conversion, we did a RAD physical condition assessment, and this was a, a, a totally new cost. And it, it was about, about probably seventy thousand dollars. Where this consultant went through all the properties and they did their assessment, so that's to totally new and outside of what you saw in the previous fiscal. I, okay. Right. Um, just just to go through the audit, uh, I'll start with the um, independent auditors report. As I explained in the finance committee, we, we issued a unqualified opinion, uh, meaning the financial statements. Uh, as they were presented, um, were uh, were fairly stated. We didn't we didn't have any uh, issues. It wasn't a qualified opinion. It was the best opinion you can get is an unqualified opinion. Some of the highlights, and I, I did hear Frank and then you discuss some of these items a little early, and we did speak about them on, on Tuesday. But I'll go over them, and if anyone has any questions, I'll be more than happy to address them. On the, on the balance sheet. Um, our assets uh, were, were increased by roughly eleven million dollars. They went from thirty million to forty-one million. The majority of that had to do with construction and process related to the New Jersey HMFA uh, loan grant that, that we received for um, major renovations to many of our projects, particularly Andrew, Andrew Jackson. Right. Okay. Um, the, the next item was uh, our restricted net, our restricted cash increase by two and a half million. That's the cash that we received from the Provident Bank loan for the RAD conversion over here at Fox Hill. RAD. I said what? Provident, Provident Bank. 
I mean, one of the, 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 the I guess, the, the, the most uh, important item on here would be the tenant accounts receivable. As, as we had stated, uh, tenant accounts receivable was up roughly about $400,000 from the previous year. You know, as I heard you speaking before, Frank, this had to do during COVID, uh, they're, they're, and this is across all the housing authorities. As I indicated in the meeting, we do audits in three different states, and this is, as we see the same thing at all the authorities. Certain tenants uh, didn't, you know, rents were not being paid, the, the amounts were being um, increased due to either loss of jobs, just not paying or whatnot. But it is an issue for a lot of housing authorities to try and collect to collect that money because, like I said, like Frank said, it does impact your services and ability to provide those services with, with that much of an allowance. Now, we did we, the housing authority did record an allowance of four hundred thousand dollars this year, up from one hundred and thirty-one. As I stated in the finance committee, that's just an allowance. None of that was written off. That would be up to the board when and if such time you determine based on consultation with your uh, management staff that those those receivables are not collectible. Do you find that common with your other authorities that they're not writing off those allowances? Right, so the, the, the allowances have been built up and as the year goes on, they're identifying certain tenants with very large balances and if they can get repayment agreements from them, they do. If they can't, those are the ones that they're, they're writing off the ones with the smaller balances, they're able to pay those and they're, and, they're, and they're getting those funds. So it is on a tenant by tenant, case by case basis. It's not just a blanket uh, write off. In my prior uh, jobs were pretty aggressive on writing off. Um, do you have an opinion on how aggressive you should be? You, you should only write off a, a tenant balance after you've exhausted sending your you know, your, your 10 day letters and then the 30 day letters and then it can go to a collection agency um certainly if that tenant leaves they can't get into another public housing entity until your balance is paid right that, that, that's that's a they're prohibited and then there is uh ways to track that so they can't get into another housing authority so it is in their best interest to try and pay it or work with you and negotiate some sort of a settlement that would be the best thing but that's what most authorities do. Wait till the end of that. Correct. All sales, then right off. Correct, because you've already built in the allowance, you've already recognized the expense of the loss, yeah. so anything else you collect then we're just gonna be, help your bottom line. Right. Thank you. Thank you. And, and if I could jump in, there would be a no Hey, uh, yes. Oh, you're still there. Jump in quickly. Prisoner is so good to see the program. Uh, uh, so I know I'm uh, might be able to give you more on this, or I'm sorry, Frank might be able to give you more on this, but Frank and I have been working trying to uh, get the process going in terms of specifically the COVID related balances, um, trying to make it clear that while we were encouraging late fees, um, we will resume charging late fees beginning in August of this year. Um, for anybody who is subject to a late fee, I'll point out for him that doesn't apply to tenants of Fox Health. They're exempt from both late fees in general. Um, but in addition to late fees, there's a now major push to issue notices to cease for failure to recertify. So hopefully that will uh, boost the recertification numbers, get some people who haven't come in in the last few years to start coming in, and also to start prioritizing some of these unpaid balances, um, starting off by first offering residents the ability to come in, make an in-house agreement, repay it, um, and I think the housing authority is prepared to be extremely flexible in terms of how exactly that is done. Um, and then if need be, to move on from that step to uh, initializing some sort of court procedure, whether it's uh, the 30-day letters that Ms. Morty's referenced or um, that eviction complaints, things like that, um, with the idea that the housing authority isn't interested in evicting anyone necessarily, but it was only so long it can go on without um, collecting some of these rents. Thank you. Madam Chair? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Aren't there organizations um, like the state? I'm oh, sorry, Erica. I'm not here. Oh, can you hear me now? No. I'm afraid to touch it. I thought we broke it. I thought we did break it. 
I'm just, can you hear me now? I'll talk loud. I think there was governmental assistance for rent. There still is. If there still is, are our residents um, eligible? Thank you. Our residents eligible? Is there any way we could? I don't know if, if, we, or if we are allowed to do any education around that. Can our yes. partner, yes. the library, or somebody, if we're not allowed to educate people around that? Well, Erica, just to answer that question, HOPES has been very instrumental in assisting housing authority residents with the back rents. Um, there are two current programs. One is through the County of Hudson that through COVID, that if you were affected by COVID in any way, and you can prove to them that that's why you didn't pay your rent. Not that you didn't pay your rent because you didn't want to pay your rent, but that if there was an actual cause, they will actually help you pay your rent. And we have been very successful in assisting quite a few residents of the Housing Authority. Now this week, um, another program opened through the state that is also assisting individuals. Um, it's through the state of New Jersey, um, and they are helping with rental assistance. Um, they have different categories. It's for disabled um, families and um, single people. But the only problem with the state is that that's a lottery. So they, they choose out of a lottery who they will help. So that's not to say that everyone that is um, applying would get it. We usually, to be honest with you, push the county one more because we have a relationship with the county. So usually when we assist a client, we kind of send it to the to their manager and follow up and say, can you look into this? How can we help them? And so that's how we've been very successful. But it's a long process. They can take over. We've had clients that we've worked with, Frank, right? Two months, maybe, with them? And I do want to say that most alone have put in over $100,000 in checks and that's continuing so the county is over at the end of august those applications and i believe the state one is only open for a week if i'm not mistaken i don't have the information in front of me but i can definitely share it with everyone tomorrow um i'll email it to you guys um our staff is there nine to five we have staff at the housing authority and we have staff at 301 garden and if there's anyone that can't make it to our office, we will absolutely do it over the phone as much as we can or through a Zoom call. And if they need documents, we will have our drivers pick up the documents needed so we can submit them. So we're here to help any way we can. I just have one question. That was a great point by Commissioner Seisman. Uh, you wrote a letter that we've been working on, that uh, Frank and I have been working on. We will reference both the county uh, and uh, state program. I know that uh, Frank, if he hasn't already, said he wants to talk to Commissioner Reyes and maybe put some of the hopes in for him as well. Try and give and essentially as much information as we can and point them in as many directions as we can. Um, and just to add to what uh, Chair Reyes said, I believe the state lottery opened at 9 a.m. on Monday morning, so 9 a.m. on the 15th, and it runs one week. So it's from the 15th to the 27th. So anybody who wants to take advantage of that, um, probably should act extremely quickly. I just have one question. Um, what's the percentage of folks of our residents that have not recertified? Um, we're at 82% right now, so 18. And we, get, we have a 5% allowance, so we need 13% yeah, to get out of the red. And more importantly, not just because they're certified, because that's when we capture that income. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. yeah. I also want to just say that with this new system, it's probably easier to keep track of who's certified and who's not because you have so many different dates, so many residents. It's really hard unless you have a system to pull reports to see who's due for for recertification. It's really hard. Hopefully, the new system is going to address that. Mike, we're going back to you. Okay. Sorry. No, no, that's fine. Um, I'll just jump over to the, um, the income statement and highlight some of the stuff, uh, information we spoke about during the uh, Finance Committee meeting. Uh, you can see from the audit report, it's on page 9, uh, 
the, the um, income statement. You see that the tenant revenues were down this year, but in relation, the uh, the operating subsidies uh, increase. So it's an inverse relationship. If the tenant revenue goes down, your operating subsidies go up. In this case, a lot of that operating subsidies with the Section 8 program or HAP payments are higher, so we have more HAP subsidy. The flip side for the public housing, when the, when your operating subsidy request is done at the beginning of the year, it's you're funded on a calendar year for operating subsidy. Uh, HUD takes into account the project expense levels and reduces it by the the, um, the, uh, the tenant income per unit tenant income. So if that's lower, your subsidy will be higher. If that's higher, the subsidy is lower. But it will take a year for that to, uh, to, to benefit you if the tenant rents go down. And the last item, um, it was spoken about it already. There was one finding in the report. The, uh, the uniform guidance report was a qualified opinion. Uh, the public housing program was selected as the major program this year uh, because it is not a low risk program. There's been a finding. Oh, sorry, sorry, because it's not a low risk program. It, it had, it's had a finding, and it's since 2016, I believe. Uh, and once again, there were, I believe, three tenant files that were, were found to be deficient, and you discussed. The EIB and, and some of the missing documents. Uh, the Housing Authority has submitted its corrective action plan to HUD. Uh, the audit has been submitted to HUD REAC. It was submitted on the 29th, the date of the report. Uh, we're waiting for that to be approved, but the audit was submitted to you and the, and the clearing now. So, if there's any questions, I'll take those. If the, not. the other two, the only other two items, I don't know if. Uh, do you get up as well on speaker? Okay. So maybe maybe we wait, but uh, the loan payoff 2024 is that? that that's the um, capital fund. So that's going to that, be that'll, that'll be paid off. And then the security in the buildings, how we're going to pay for it in the future, that's going to be you as well. Right. Thanks. I will say this, uh, Chair. Yes. Uh, it's very good work by our professionals. But um, we have subcommittees, and each subcommittee has a chair. This was an hour and a half call, right? That's a lot of information. I happen to be the only one on the call as a commissioner. The chair of the finance committee is uh, Chairman. I mean, uh, Commissioner Sanford. You know, he, he kind of said he couldn't make the meeting like 10, 15 minutes before. So all I would ask in the future, if you know, if, if you're the chair, and we've had this on the books for I don't know months, you know, let yourself know so that we can get another commissioner. Aaron's also on the subcommittee; he wasn't able. I don't know what happened with that, but you know, so, so someone else can be checking and asking questions, and not all the load is on is on one person. I think we're going to fire on all cylinders a little bit better. That would be my only my only uh, recommendation. Thank you. I'd like to respond. So, is there an issue here, a problem? Can you talk into the microphone? Is, is there an issue or a problem with that? You're asking just, no, no, I just, I just made a comment on what. Yeah, I just made it a comment. It sounded like you were coming at me. No, I was, just, I was just stating the facts. The facts were that I was the only commissioner on it. You're the chair of the subcommittee. Uh, there's no opinion there. Those, those are the facts. And the meeting has been on the books for months. Director Reco did a great job of reminding us all. 15 minutes before the meeting started, you wrote an email saying you couldn't make it. Uh, that's it. So next time, just let the chair know so we can get someone else, maybe the uh, alternative, the uh, alternate, onto the meeting. That would be very beneficial. I think it would be more efficient for our board. That's Andrew. it. I hear you loud and clear. Thank you. And I will be happy to review every fact with you at the appropriate time. Okay. I don't know what that means. Yeah, let's uh, move forward. You know exactly what I mean. Okay. Just before Mike switch down, are, are, are we talking about um, both, both on it, both years on it now? That's correct. Mike reviewed both the 2020 and the 2021. It's a comparative. Comparative statement. The, the audit was done last year for 19 and 20. This year it's 
21 and 20, they're, they're always the matter of safety. So. Because that's really two resolutions right here. Yep. And if you satisfied, maybe we can move on for a motion to approve one oh. and then the other. Let's do one and then the other. Okay, this one. Two separate motions. Two separate resolutions. Okay. Motion and, and second was made on the original one, correct? Yes. So we can call a vote on that one, right? So this one is for fiscal year October 1st, 2019. To September 30th, 2020. Very good. Are so we ready? Director Multo? A. Forbes? Yes. A. Pistato? Yes. A. Lewis? Yes. B. Reyes? Yes. A. Russo? Aye. J. Sanford? Yes. B. E. Seitzman? Yes. Yeah. Resolution number 2022-0704, resolution to adopt and approve the single audit for fiscal year October 1st, 2020 to September 30th, 2021 of the Housing Authority of the City of Hoboken, conducted by Pocari and Company CPA. Motion. Second. Director. A. Forbes. Yes. A. Postato. Yes. A. Lewis. Yes. B. Reyes. Yes. M. Russo. Aye. J. Sanford. Yes. E. Seitz. Yes. Thank you. Resolution number 2022-0705, resolution approving the AMP budgets for the Housing Authority of the City of Hoboken. Motion. Second. Thank you, and uh, for those of you that may not know, for whatever reason, this is Mr. Bill Ketchin. Um, he is our fee accountant. Um, in many ways, the fee accountant, as you know, is an extension of the Housing Authority staff. Works with us way, way too much. Quite a bit um, on a lot of financial issues, and he's our financial coach and guide. So, um, and I think we've got two issues here today. We've got the resolution for our AMP budgets, um, and then um, an annual and capital budget. So, yeah, I'm going to take it away. Yeah, just, just so that I could preference it's similar to just previous with the audits, uh, the AMP budgets. Uh, is in conjunction so 705 is the amp budget resolution and then 706 is the annual and capital fund budget which is what we commonly is referred to as the new jersey state budget and so the amp budgets are basically rolled right into the state budgets if i'm not mistaken but take it away bill <laughs> i just have to spell your name william patchy k-a-t-c-h-e-n good evening everybody it's good to see everybody a lot <laughs> it's been a lot of years. So, the state of New Jersey, through the Local Fiscal Affairs Act, provides that you consider a budget for approval at the very least 60 days or more before the start of your fiscal year. Your fiscal year begins October 1st, so we're in the middle of July, so we're 15 days in advance of that time period for consideration of an approval. Now what that does is, if the board so desires to authorize the introduction, Mark signs it. Now through the FAST, F-A-S-T system, it is electronically sent to the state. They scrub it to a degree. They develop their questions, and then they send their questions and their comments back to Mark and back to myself. We respond to the questions, comments, any issues, which I don't expect there are going to be any for a few reasons, and then it will be back before the board for adoption at your September meeting. That's the schedule. We've complied with that now since Mark has been here and before that. You had a treasurer, a commissioner, I'm sorry, his name uh, uh, has left me. Who's the gentleman who's the IT guy? Anyway, he made it clear that he wanted that budget introduced no later than the end of July. David Denny. Right. David Denny. Mr. Denny. Commissioner Denny. So we started the process, and thanks to Mark, thanks to Emil, we're able to generate the documents. So, the first budget, which now has grown into three budgets, is 
the AMP budgets, AMPs one through four, Fox Hill, which is no longer considered an AMP because you converted to RAD, and your housing choice voucher program. They've been prepared. The majority of the data is objective. It's based on formula. So, rental income, current rent laws, HUD operating subsidy, the forms that were submitted back in January to HUD that have already been somewhat approved, you won't receive a final approval till September. Which, by the way, unfortunately, due to the pandemic, the funding at the federal level is at one of the highest it's been in 10 years both for operating subsidy and both for capital. That's assisted you this year, last year, in order to be able to fund items as needed. For example, as Commissioner mentioned, we doubled, more than doubled, the security budget this year. You went out to bid, you received a bid of two, just under $200,000. That's been included in this budget. Your rental income numbers are a half a million dollars higher because your occupancy has increased. But on the other side of the coin, and this goes to a discussion that you guys just had, we've also increased your bad debt allowance number to 5% of the budget. Too high. Something that's got to be worked on and brought down. Utilities are based on formula, maintenance costs based on historical and current, and capital funding, meaning HUD funding of capital, brought into operations at one of the highest levels we've had because HUD has increased. Amel mentioned the other day, when Amel came to work here, the amount of capital funds that you were receiving from HUD was just under $2 million. This year's capital fund allocation is how much, Amel? $4.3 million. $4.3 million. And, as the commissioner asked, in two years, you will no longer have debt service for the PHA capital fund leveraging which will generate another $800,000 a year for the authority to use for capital projects, current capital projects. So that will be retired. That was a 20-year loan. That was a 20-year loan. So, now that I've given you a little introduction into that, this budget provides for a surplus in AMP, CLCC, which is the Central Office Course Center, in the amount of $240,263. It's truly not a lot of money. That sounds like a lot, it is to you and me every day, but not when you have a budget where your total expenditures are $21 million. But be that as it may, it's still a surplus and it's provided for increases in security, salary increases, health benefits. One of the things that your administration has done, they've taken it upon themselves to consider all the prior workers' comp cases and other stuff you've had. So your insurance premiums, which are budgeted at one and a quarter million dollars, are flat. While most of my other clients get premiums of interest. So this budget for both the AMPs, for Fox Hill, and by the way, I forgot one thing. Additionally, at the director's request, we've added two hundred thousand dollars operationally for capital projects for Fox Hill to support what was funded when you guys converted and borrowed. And we're hoping we're going to be able to continue that going forward. Because the increases that we're seeing across the board 
all the pandemic, because of the pandemic, are ridiculous. One of my clients, unfortunately affected by Ida, not you guys, I'm talking about, they had to replace their elevators. Two elevators, one and a half million dollars. Three times what it was pre-pandemic. And that was the low bid on a half a dozen bids received. So this budget as it stands, I'm comfortable with from the standpoint of the majority, the largest numbers are objective, the utilities, the health benefits, um, the salaries, those categories, what we have to be concerned about is the bad debt. Getting on top of the collection issues. And obviously, as was mentioned earlier, the vacancy issues are going the right way down. Because once you go over 95% occupancy, then your HUD funding increases from an operating subsidy standpoint. So you're gonna see any losses in funding as a result of reduced appropriations down the road to somewhat be offset by the increased funding due to increased stock. HUD put that system in place, it makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Absolutely. Okay, so that's for the amps. The state of New Jersey budget is a reflection of that. State of New Jersey budget about eight years ago was changed or flip-flopped from principally a financial related budget to an informational budget. Who are all the commissioners? Do any of the commissioners work for the town? Which by the way, or, or for another government agency? This year they deleted that question, I guess for whatever reason. Uh, what are your annual health benefit costs? Are the employees paying for health benefits? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we've also included a million dollars as a placeholder for various capital projects at this point, but I would venture to say you're going to spend a lot more than that on capital projects in the next year. Um, one last thought, and this is a segue from Mike's audit. The first page the state of New Jersey goes to is page F, like in Frank, eight of the budget. How do you look surplus-wise? So, your surplus, based on Mike's audit, as of the end of last year, when adjusted for non-cash expenditures. You have two very large expenditures every year. OPEC, other post-employment benefits. That's the present value of the future value. Say that five times, right? That's the present value of the future value of uh, what you're going to pay to retirees the stream of expense for working here 25 years. The second is the accrued pension liability, the unfunded accrued pension liability. So we all know our pension system at the state is getting better, but it's still unfunded. And your share of that unfunded liability has to be bought. Now, are you ever going to have to fund that? The current OPEP for retirees, you pay every month. AMO electronically pays your regular health benefit premiums, and he pays the premiums for retirees. So, OPEB, in my opinion, is really a moot point in New Jersey because you're paying the retirees. But under government auditing standards, they want to see what is your present value based upon your current employee's population of what it's going to cost you over time for that. That number for the OPEB is $11,711,000. For the pension, your little piece of the whole state, that big pie in New Jersey, is also $11 million. So the state, understanding that you have to book it, account for it, 
because government auditing standards require it, says we want to know what your cash surplus is so it gets added back. So your, your surplus as projected at the end of this year for your public housing slash RAD programs, 5.7 million. Your surplus for the Section 8 Housing Choice Voucher Program, $256,000. But as I mentioned, your budget's $21 million, and your projected surplus is $200,000, so that number could go south very quickly. But you do have adequate surplus, and the state will sign off on that. They will look at my sort, and they'll make sure that the numbers we included were at. So, sorry I spoke a lot about a lot of different topics, but you gotta do that with the budget. Well, thank you for that, Bill. One of the things I wanna notice, because you, you did spend a little time on the unrestricted um, that as a position, and, and that is something that I'm very serious about. Um, we were up to, around that 5.9. Um, that's still only a little over two months of our operating fund. In other words, if if our income died tomorrow, for any reason, we could survive on that, that on that bank account for a little over two months. HUD's always yeah. looking for four to six months. Yes. That. And a good solid operation at four to six months. And, and that, that maybe goes back to Mr. Costado's question too, is one of the challenges we're having is to try to increase that amount for that, if you will, rainy day fund, that amount that's in our bank account. Now that's very difficult because we've got capital fund needs, we've got repair needs, uh, but that has been a balanced situation. And when I walked in the door, I was very clear. Increase your net restricted asset position. And we're getting I'm sorry, increase your net, your net restricted asset Unrestricted. Unrestricted, unrestricted net restriction. So we're getting there. We've managed to have some back over the past few years, but it's that balance. And on that vein, what Mark just said, similar to a municipality. A municipality budgets an amount for an allowance for bad debt, X. If they come in lower than that, that goes right to their surplus. Well, in your case, probably, when we get up to better than 97% occupancy, HUD provides funding at 97%. So anything above that goes to our bottom line. And that's why it's so important to get those occupancy levels up, including the collection of rates. Any questions? Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Nice job. Thank you. Good thank to see you. everybody. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank Bill all year long. Yeah. He's always on us. So thank you. So for. Uh, 2022 0705. Um, a Forbes? Yes. A Pistato? Yes. A Lewitt? Yes. B Reyes? Yes. And Russo? Aye. J Sanford? Yes. B Sites? Yes. Resolution 2022 0706 resolution authorizing the approval of the annual and capital fund for fiscal year. October 1, 2022 to September 30, 2023. Motion. Second. Question? A. Forbes? Yes. A. Pistano? Yes. A. Lewitt? Yes. B. Reyes? Yes. M. Russo? Aye. J. Sanford? Yes. B. Sites? Yes. Resolution number 2022-0707, a resolution of the Housing Authority of the City of Hoboken to ratify the July 8, 2022 award of an emergency contract to replace a water heater at 311 13th Street. Motion. Second. Yes. Director for questions? Questions? No. Director for questions? A. Forbes? Yes. A. Pistato? Yes. A. Lewis? Yes. B. Reyes? Yes. M. Russo? Aye. J. Sanford? Yes. B. E. Sites? Yes. Resolution 2022-0708, a resolution of the Housing Authority of the City of Hoboken to award a contract for trash chute maintenance services. Awesome. Second. Questions, concerns? 
A, a Forbes? Yes. A Infastado? Yes. A Lewitt? Yes. B. Reyes? Yes. A Maruso? Aye. J. Sanford? Yes. B. Sykes? Yes. Resolution number 2022 a resolution of the Housing Authority of the City of Hoboken to award a contract for replacement of emergency generators at various locations. Motion. Second. Question? A. Forbes? Yes. A. Impostado? Yes. A. Lewitt? Yes. B. Reyes? Yes. A. Maruso? Aye. J. Sanford? Yes. E. Sykes? Yes. Resolution number 2022-0710, a resolution of the Housing Authority of the City of Hoboken to award a contract for security guard services. Motion. Second. Question? Question? You hear that, residents? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Director Cole. A Forbes? Yes. A Impostado? Yes. A Lewitt? Yes. B Reyes? Yes. A Russo? Aye. J Sanford? Yes. B e. Sykes? Yes. Resolution number 2022-07-11, a resolution of the Housing Authority of the City of Hoboken to increase the amount of contract for extraordinary capital improvements. Second. Question. Here. A Forbes. Yes. A Postado. Yes. A Lewin. Yes. B Reyes. Yes. A Russo. Aye. J Sanford. Yes. E Sykes. Yes. Resolution number 2022-07. Point twelve, a resolution of the Housing Authority of the City of Hoboken to, I'm sorry, to, a, to appoint two community trustees to the Board of Housing for Hoboken, and this is the resolution that we have decided to table. Motion, so motion, motion to table. Second. Like on the vote to table. On the vote to table the resolution, Director. A Forbes. Yes. A. a. Postado? Yes. A. Lewitt? Yes. B. Reyes? Yes. A. Russo? Aye. J. Sanford? Yes. E. Sykes? Yes. Resolution number 2022-0713, a resolution of the Housing Authority of the City of Hoboken to honor Arlette Angelo Braxton at 311 Harrison Street, Hoboken, New Jersey. Motion. Second. And I, I, I must say something, sure. because we all love our life so deeply. And she was such a great partner to us, such a great leader for me. As I spent my time here, we became close and, and we'll all miss her. Um, this is a motion to rename the courtyard at Harrison Gardens. Um, we did have a discussion on when we want to have the event. And, uh, you know, we're, we just passed the change order to renovate the courtyard. So um, I would like to say once that courtyard is renovated, um, let's have the dedication ceremony. Um, it should be all that long, be a few months, and uh, just before it gets cold. And then we'll have a nice plaque, we'll do the dedication ceremony. Uh, but this, this makes it official that we are going to be renaming the courtyard. Um, and the courtyard is now officially renamed once you pass this, uh, the Arlette Angela Braxton courtyard. I'd just like to piggyback on what the director has said. I think when I first moved into the Housing Authority, Arlette was probably the first resident there to welcome me, and that was over 15 years ago. So she was just as welcoming to the new people, to the people that lived there forever. Her door was always open to anyone, the children, anybody. Um, you asked for help, she didn't have it, she found it. So if there's anyone that's more deserving than this, it would be her. So, thank you. Great. The shining light for us. Yes, really. So we have a motion and yeah. second. We're ready for a vote. A Forbes. Uh, a Pistato. Yes. A Lewis. Yes. B. Reyes. Yes. A Russo. Aye. J. Sanford. Yes. E. Sykes. Yes. Yes. And we will be notifying the family that will be awesome. very pleased. Uh, we're we'll, we'll yeah. yeah. uh, yeah. uh, yeah. Lillian Dodge. Yes. Um, was there ever any conversation about leaving something after her as well? 
Um, I, I, I don't think there was. I, I, I mean, I, I yeah, wasn't she, on the board. Yeah, she, she was among this advocate as well as, as what we call it, um, Ann Arlette, for us who grew up with her. Yeah. That was Ann Arlette. But Lillian George was also an equal firecracker. Yeah. Um, who, who was a uh, community advocate, um, who was um, spearheading a lot of the meetings when I was growing up. In the housing, so Lillian George was was also a uh, force to be reckoned with. Uh, her name on the street was Dunk. Uh, it was. Probably before my time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, this is something that we, at the city level too, we, we kind of run into this, so to speak, yeah. where you have so many people that have been involved through the years, and you want to honor everybody. Um, I think it's it's probably a good idea for us as a board. To figure out how we can do that uh, and set some type of policy so that I mean, we're not just we're meetings. not yeah we're not just always you know naming a street or a courtyard or a library or whatever it may be. We collectively should kind of figure out what that looks like so that as things happen, we have the ability to honor those who have been in the community, who have been amazing advocates for our residents, and, and not only in the housing authority but even beyond because. Their work has, has moved well past the boundaries of the housing authority. So I think it's a great idea, and I think we should probably talk about that so that we can set some kind of policy. Absolutely. These are, these are resident advocates yes. that have stood up and, um, and really fought for us. Really, I mean, they had fights at their housing meetings. <laughs> you know, it's not nice to say, but yeah, it used to get real heated when I was growing up, real heated. And, and Arlette, and um, Jean, Jean, and, and Dom, and my mother. Uh, so yeah, so it, it was it was beautiful back then because the residents really, really had a voice, really had a voice. Thank you, Commissioner Ford. Commissioner, I just want to say something about the computer system. So the whole computer system was horrible. Only reason I know this because when I became a commissioner, I was on the procurement committee and we had to sit through interviews with the new computer system. And we must have had, I don't know, five, seven in-depth, like two, two hour interviews. And the problem was when hope comes to the housing or anybody comes, especially around Christmas holiday time, for toy distribution and, they, and you say, Danny, I need the names of all the kids. They would do, and they did it, thank you very much, I don't know if they're here anymore. They would do it manually. So they would literally do it manually, and it would take some time, it took a lot of time, but they did do it, especially during COVID, when we needed to match up everybody. But this is a much, is so much easier, so it's just a very antiquated system. So we're much happier they put it to the middle. I would also, before we end the meeting, I kind of, what, I have a few things to say. So first of all, I'd like to thank the Hoboken Police Department because I know that this last month has not been easy for you guys. Not to say that every other month is not easy, but we have had some challenges down, um, I want to say in the four projects area, um, the Harrison Gardens. Um, and you guys have been very responsive in making sure that it doesn't get out of hand, that no one gets hurt, that we have no more of these um, shootings that have been happening. And so I want to thank you for that. I want to thank you guys for all the work you did yesterday during our trip, escorting us out, providing us with beverages for the residents, which was really nice. It was something unexpected. And we really appreciate it and we thank you guys. I know sometimes we all get heated and frustrated, but some of us are residents, so I apologize for beforehand, but know that you are appreciated and that what you guys are doing is being seen out there. Um, I guess, Andrew, during our security committee meeting, we could go into depth of some concerns yeah. with residents that have been brought up that I think we could address during those meetings. So, thank you. Um, my next comment goes out to the um, employees of the Housing Authority. And I kind of say this at every meeting. I know they get the brunt of everything. I know we hear it. Residents that know us call us, and we hear it maybe once, twice. Some more than others, but we hear it. But these employees hear it day in and day out. And I could only imagine what they go through. So I want you to know that I appreciate what you're doing with what you are given. I know that 
maintenance has been probably one of the most difficult departments, I want to say, within the last few years because all we have are maintenance issues, the majority. If it's not a security issue, it's a maintenance issue. And I just want to acknowledge that um, the new director has come in guns blazing. Like He has really been on board. Any issues that are brought to his attention, along with Frank and Mr. Reco always, he's on it. Sammy, I can't take away from him, who's been here for so long. He's done an amazing job, always following up. I know, and he knows I, I, I get on him every chance I get, but um, I know we can't fix every problem, but sometimes um, what we're doing may not seem like enough to some, but just we know, we the board, and, I, and I'm speaking for myself, and I think most of us are as well, know that you're trying your best with what you are given. So I want to thank you guys, and thank obviously the managers of this building who were so spoken of so highly um, compared to a few months when we came here and you know there was a hundred issues to come back a few months later and see how things have changed definitely show progress within the you know as the, the administrative part of the housing authority so I just want to say thank you I know sometimes thank you means a lot to some people so thank you guys we will pass that on what a great staff thank you. Thank you. Motion closed. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, guys, for that. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Okay, so we're going to go back to the board. Yes, we are.